Today was day two of Expedition Ozark, and for us it was kind of a mellow day, but not so mellow, I think, for, for the team. It's just a huge, long first leg, so just took everyone a long time, or is still taking people a long time to come through. So we've just been really hanging out at TA1 all day today and seeing teams as they've come through and updated uh, passports and dealt with power issues and well, not issues but just just keeping stuff powered up so um i'll give you a little a uh, few clips throughout the day and then uh yeah it's nice we've just wrapped up um i think greg is gonna hang out here for the rest of the night watching teams come in and check trackers and i'm moving down the course probably to ta3 so uh, at that point we can check people um their trackers again and really we're we're kind of just making sure that they're powered up and have enough juice to, to last through the next few legs. So yeah, wrapping up uh, day two out here in the Ozarks. So we got to TA1 last night, um, unloaded, uh, well helped unload some, some bikes and bins and we're just here now, actually we're waiting for the first teams to come in. It's still going to be a little while, and of course the weather's coming, so that's always nice for people. So um, for, for me today, we're going to be keep really, the big thing is now checking passports as they come in. We'll kind of show you how that works, uh, making sure that tallies up to what we've, we've got going on on our tracking page. And then uh, also everything just becomes uh, a struggle with batteries, right? So we've got to try and keep our... Um, cell trackers up and running and they really kind of get drained in areas with no cell service and they've just come through a massive leg with no cell service so we've been trying to manage that trying to manage that so i'll we'll check them as they come into this ta it's a little early to start doing swaps on trackers but we'll check the battery level especially on the the garments as well and if we need to we can quickly top them up to ta where they may be here for a few minutes or hours so it gives us a chance to just throw them on charge so we're getting that set up this morning um, and getting ready for the teams to come in. And so th this is Heidi, right? She's in charge of everything. Uh -huh. Hello. Um, but she, yeah, we only see her in the morning when we, she comes and wants coffee. <laughs> <laughs> That's the only time we ever see her. So oh, Greg, Greg's here <laughs> making her brew, right? He's, he's lying. I'm actually coming here often just to talk, you know? Yeah, so she I, does. She comes and chats. Yeah, and to chat and ask just things. tell her then all my stories from other races and Big for stuff. <laughs> uh, at TA1, there's uh, Estonia. They're actually the first team that's just come in. So I think they're on the time estimates and stuff. They're doing really good for the for the fast times. I just went over and checked with them and make sure that their battery's looking good, especially on their, their Garmin. Um, we have two devices. So we've got a Garmin and a cell tracker. The Garmin's really good. It's at like 91%. That's doing pings about every 10 minutes. And then our satellite, uh, our cell tracker's doing about every five, but we're once again now in an area with no no cell service, and that really taxes uh, our cell trackers. And we're we're planning to swap them out mid race, um, but it's nice to know the top teams coming through here that their their garments still got so much juice. So that gives me a little bit of relief. And really being out here from this point on, it's like batteries and power. So that's like even whether it's like in my in my van trying to keep that charged up. Um, and we're lucky. We, I've got solar, and it was raining earlier on. I'm like, oh, everything's going going to, to die, but that's that's going okay. Um, and the, the other funny thing is, so we've got uh, we've got a uh, camera sitting up there, and that's live streaming right now at TA this TA. And so uh, it was funny. There's um, a lot of obviously people. These guys are changing and stuff like that. So we want to be kind of respectful to that. And so we saw sort of a few bare bottoms earlier on so we've actually moved our camera a little bit away from the TA and we're pointing at the, the check-in area so we're trying to keep an eye on that stuff too but if you're watching on on mobile and you want to know if there's a live stream or any video up on our page there's a little there's a little like play arrow at the top of the um, mobile screen and if you click on that if we've got anything streaming you're going to see another window pop up and you can look at it and if we've got a daily video that the media guys are putting out we actually embed that in our tracking platform too so you can you can watch it there as well I mean, you know, when I'm talking about power and keeping stuff done up, what I really have in my van, I have, uh, have it's all very geeky. I've got three um, 100 amp hour lithium batteries under there and they get charged from solar. But overnight, they were my um, 
The Starlink really kills kills the power on that. So we've got I've got a little Delta box here, and I can go and charge that. We actually have over there. It's kind of nice. We've got a little building that's got power, so I was able to go over and I keep that charged, and then I switch my uh, power on my van over to that uh, my 110. So I do it. But you can see here. I'm starting to get some juice back. I don't know if you can see this little panel. Can't really see it very well. Green means good. It's getting solar coming in and my battery's starting to charge up. So, you know, once again, constantly trying to deal with um, power and making sure everything's working. It's a top tip if anyone's ever put on a race, make sure your uh, teams move their own gear. So you can see the Estonian guys there, making them load up their, their bins. And then, uh, you know, if there's not anywhere to load, they should move their stuff to a different area. So you can see these uh, these bike boxes should get fewer and fewer as we have teams come through. Seven. So we're still at uh, tier one and we're um which have, I think six six te top teams come through, uh, the first teams come through. It's a long leg. Um, we just spoke to I just spoke to Bones USA and Jesse from from that team, and he's he's a top racer, and he they were having a hard time coming through there. So I think we're going to see the rest of the teams coming through behind these top teams right now. Really, really, uh, really struggling to get off this this first leg. But um, you know, hopefully they'll push on. But what we're doing right now is. So the way we're doing our scoring on this event is we have a geofence on our checkpoint. So if the team gets within 250 meters of that checkpoint, we'll actually score them automatically on the leaderboard and it's so it try and keeps it up to date as we go through. But we want to make sure 100% sure they've been there. So we're doing a couple of different things uh, to make sure that. So these are, are the punch cards that teams are given. This is, they get them for each leg. So this is leg one that they've been given and uh, they have a pin punch uh, at each of the checkpoints that they'll see and you can see on this they've been been punched and then we also actually have some checkpoints which are pictures and so they're every team's carrying a digital camera and they have to take a certain picture and it's outlined in their um guide i don't have that here but i'll i'll grab it and show you that guys after we'll go uh, later so there's a picture and then when they come into the ta here the person at the check-in there will cross-reference and make sure that they've taken the right picture on the camera and we'll just kind of initial it there and say, okay, we've got it. So that's way we know that they've been to all the checkpoints. And now what I have to do on the back end is I'll take this and on our back end system, I can see here um, all the geofence scoring that they've been through. So I'll come in and look at Bend Racing and I'll literally go across and see if they have a time and a score for each of those checkpoints, it's all good. If for some reason the geofence missed them, but they've got the checkpoint here, I'll go and actually add the point in here. So we cross-reference it, true it up. In some cases, they may have been close to the checkpoint, but not actually got it and then got scored for it. And then in that case, I'll take that away. So we kind of do this as the race goes on, as teams come through the TA, we'll just get a, a little batch and kind of go through them. So if you see any kind of weirdness in the in the leaderboard, it may be because I haven't got the, the um, punch cards yet and kind of trued them up with that leaderboard but what it gives is right at the end it gives you guys online who are watching a pretty accurate leaderboard all the way through and um you know as teams cross the finish line it's going to be like friday saturday this week we'll be cross-checking that last punch card but everything else up to that point should be pretty accurate so yeah i'm going to go ahead and get the rest of this stuff checked so we'll know at least the top six seven teams uh all right on the leaderboard up through ta1 these are punch cards and they have like descriptions of all the checkpoints down here and for the picture ones they're actually specifically given in the guide the picture that they have to take and then they'll take that and then we'll check it we're checking that uh when they come into the ta to make sure it matches up we don't usually do that it's kind of new so um they wanted to do that on this race but we'll we'll see how that goes um so far so good they having they had five pitches they had to take on leg one and we've done that for the top teams coming through and it's worked out okay. Yeah. So as I was kind of saying earlier, you know, one of the big things is just constantly as we're on the road, keeping everything charged, whether it's trackers, power, you know, we're not, we not always have power to hook up to. Uh, we do have a generator, but we don't want to kind of run that all the time. So we're actually in, this is a little Airbnb. 
and we're basically stealing their electricity. I have my, uh, this is my EcoFlow here. So it's nice, it's nice to the, charges up really quickly, uh, just goes to about zero to 100 in about an hour. But it's basically, you can plug it in, grab a ton of electricity from somewhere and I can take it back to my van and charge it and use it. Volunteers, unsung heroes of adventure racing.